2018, a new rooms opened with a new layout. Which approach and strategies did you use for designing these spaces? Well, most of all, uh, these new galleries replace uh, old gallery settings, most of which uh, uh, are from the 1970s, when the Uffizi had far less visitors, but also a far less international audience than the Uffizi have today. Now we have uh, more than two million visitors every year in the Uffizi, plus another almost two million visitors on the other side of the Arno River at uh, the Palazzo Pitti and the Boboli Gardens. Uh, but just in the Uffizi, uh, people come from very different and very diverse cultural backgrounds. Uh, so, um, uh, whereas the 1970s installation was strongly um, inspired by a, a catalographic, uh, approach, uh, which means that people would already need to know a lot about art history in order to understand what is where. And uh, moreover, a recent reinstallation was very topographically oriented, so there were all these um, uh, time moments of time travel and chronological breaks and jumps. Uh, we uh, actually tried to start uh, not so much from the question, how are we going to order uh, these paintings in a uh, catalographically logical way, but um, how will the visitors be interacting with the paintings? And that means that we had to choose a, a musical approach. That is, uh, we have to have fast moments, we have to have very slow moments, we have to have um, bigger spacings, we have to have concentrations. Um, only in that way we can assure uh, that people do get the important moments, or, uh, but also they do not neglect those works that they need to, um, or we hope at least, that they would be discovering. We centered a room around uh, Caravaggio's uh, very, very famous uh, Medusa, but we put less famous works around her in order to contextualize her. In some instances, such as in the Medusa room, uh, there, were, uh, there was a thematic thread. In others, it was about the dialogue of different artists. Um, and altogether, our main approach is chronological. It is cross-cultural, um, which is an approach that was already taken after World War II. Um, by the great museum director Roberto Salvini. We took his approach basically. Um, we brought it into the 21st century because it is so timely for our day. So we really show how the artists reacted to one another. How important is the concept of edutainment, that is the educational entertainment, in the setting up of exhibitions and cultural events? Well, the concept of edutainment oftentimes uh, is criticized by certain people who think that you have to suffer in order uh, to truly understand art, which is not true. The concept of edutainment, by the way, is an Italian invention. It was uh, invented by Horace already uh, in ancient Roman time. Uh, and um, uh, his idea that actually you could educate, you could entertain, but you could also put both together. Aut prodesse volunt, aut delectare poete, aut simul et jucunt, uh, et idonia dicere vitae. Well, what we're uh, trying uh, to do uh, is in fact not to neglect what for most people is the most important part about art, and which is the emotional aspect. So the um, entertaining aspect, the idea is not diversion, obviously. The idea is not um, to uh, have people uh, thrilled in a superficial way. In fact, this, is, this would not even be possible with such great masterpieces as we have uh, at the Uffizi. Again, think of the Medusa by Caravaggio. This is such a strong painting that it has um, an immediate emotional impact on visitors and that means automatically it's not just uh, some abstract uh, work to be learned, um, but it's, uh, it does really speak to people uh, whatever uh, knowledge uh, they might have about Caravaggio. Uh, that uh, is very important, uh, not just for the permanent collection, also for uh, exhibitions. At the moment we have an exhibition on Spain and Italy in the Renaissance. The 
uh, dialogue uh, across the Mediterranean Sea. And again, we have a uh, strongly emotional introductory video projection in there uh, to give people the basis um, and put them into the mindset of uh, the sea as a medium uh, of uh, interchange, exchange of knowledge of other cultures, of discovery. So one does not exclude the other, uh, that's very important. It's not that a, uh, an exhibition can ever become more scholarly by being boring. Uh, quite the contrary is true. social networks is becoming always more and more important for attracting and engaging visitors. How is the Uffizi uh, addressing to this need? Well, when I arrived here as a director a bit more than two years ago, the Uffizi did not even have a website. Uh, they had no uh, social media either. Uh, I founded a new um, a digital communications department which has nine uh, members uh, now, and in fact, we're active now both on Twitter and on Instagram, and in fact, on Instagram, uh, we are the fastest growing museum. Um, as we speak, we have uh, more than 120,000 followers already, and our principle is very uh, basic. We propose a new image every morning uh, from our collections, and then we put a um, exploratory a scholarly but not highbrow text uh, to explain it. It's strictly bilingual, Italian and English. So, in fact, we have some feedback that some um, students from Italian schools actually use it in order to improve their English, as well as we do know that some college students from uh, Australia are using it and following it in order to improve their Italian. So there's additional uh, advantages uh, in here. Again, um, we conceive of our social media not uh, simply as attractors to the museum. We already have two, more than two million visitors. Uh, it's not about the numbers. We conceive of them as a part of our a channel of our mission, just as we uh, use uh, the exhibitions, as we use um, scholarly publications, as we use general publications to communicate what uh, uh, we can communicate about these great works of art uh, that uh, we have here at the Uffizi. In the very same way the social network is just, is, it's not a promotional channel, but our main um, thrust is really to uh, use them as educational uh, channels. And I think that's the reason why we are growing faster than others. How can museums foster and encourage dialogue between people with different social and cultural backgrounds? Uh, that um, is a very good uh, and important question uh, because we do have people from all sorts of different social and cultural backgrounds in the museum already. So we're very privileged uh, as far as that is concerned. So the Japanese are the first in the morning, they always line up. Uh, before eight o'clock in order to be the first when we open at a uh, quarter past eight to be in the galleries. And then slowly the other nations follow. Um, uh, so in order to foster a dialogue with the Japanese, I think uh, we would need to have other people get in early in the morning. Apart from uh, changing our labels for the paintings, which need to be more general, and we're just in the process of uh, doing this. And apart from uh, that, we actually have a new department which I founded on um, accessibility and cultural mediation. Uh, they have been working on some great programs, getting in people from different communities, getting them into dialogue, but then also proposing uh, their results, their approaches, their different approaches to the same work of art on our website and that has been hugely successful as well. Uh, so you can actually uh, have readers, um, well we have viewers that came in uh, from all sorts of different countries um, and they documented their personal response to the works of art that they picked uh, on our website. This was just the beginning so uh, this program is going on and um, it is however important that a museum which is open 
to everyone. The Uffizi is open to everyone since 1769. It was uh, one of the first museums in the world to be open to everyone. Um, this, even today, and perhaps today more than ever, uh, can be a hotbed for intercultural and intersocial communication and exchange. Which is, in your opinion, the main challenge for a museum today? Well, different museums have different challenges, but there are certain challenges that are um, actually uh, valid for all the museums. One very fundamental challenge, not just for museums, but certainly for museums, is the digital revolution. People just perceive the world in a different way. Many people come to the museum and um, hardly get their uh, head and their eyes off their uh, smartphones. Uh, that uh, is a phenomenon that we don't uh, just see in the museums. It's uh, something that schools have to fight with. Um, and of course, we cannot simply say no smartphones in the museum. On the contrary, it's important to use the technology to activate it in a productive way in order to um, really value it what is so special about museums, the presence of great original works of art. So it's all right if people bring their phones in there. It's all right that people look up on Wikipedia additional information. Actually, that's pretty wonderful that nowadays you can do it. In the past, you had to write down some notes and then go to the library to do this. Much faster now, it's of course also much faster to get to wrong information, so it's important to educate people uh, in this regard as well. But what is really important is to use uh, the digital media uh, in a way that fosters dialogue between different visitors. You also need to provide information that prompts discussion. So if you add a x-ray image of uh, a work of art and people can look at it together on their phones, uh, then uh, this is something that actually fosters communication between uh, people. Also, if you can download it, if you can forward it to your friends online, there's nothing wrong uh, about that either. So you really need to have um, uh, content, uh, uh, online content, um, on the phones, on the apps, or uh, we have already developed uh, lots of content for a website which is, however, cross uh, platform and um, as so many people actually do it, use it on their phones in order to get them also back to the work of art and really take advantage of what they can do only here and at no other place in the world that is to have the presence of the actual work of art. Mm -hmm.